Ronin, why do you not have any W900s in your fleet? Ronin, do you have any trucks with a Caterpillar engine? Ronin, do you have any old school Pete's? No, I don't. I hate every single one of those trucks. Why do I hate them? Because at the end of the day, it's dollars in and dollars out. And I hate the fact that the fuel consumption is horrible on every single one of those trucks. I'm here to make money and not to donate my money to Saudi Arabia and Iran and everybody else that profits off of our oil, okay? I'd like to keep my money in my pocket. Drop the mic. So we'll quickly talk about why I do not have any one of those trucks in my fleet and why I prefer to go the new route versus the old route. So first of all, let's talk about the comfort, all right? I can sit with anybody out there and discuss with them and show them how a newer unit is a lot more comfortable for anybody who ranges from five feet to six foot five, why a Freightliner would be a lot more comfortable than any one of these W900s, these old school Pete's, this Peterbilt over here that you can see, this red one, okay? These trucks are not comfortable, all right? I freaking whine and I hate going in there to shoot videos. You know why? Because I can't move around in that thing. So I don't know how you expect to be on the road for three, four, five, or six days in a truck like that, all right? I would break literally almost every single bone in my body if I was to drive that thing for five or six days. Now, not only that, when you look outside the windshield, okay, first of all, there's literally like a foot and a half. You can't see shit when you're driving. When I'm filming in it, I can't see shit. I don't know what you guys go through when you're driving one of those things. You need to understand when the fuel is so expensive, all right? Driving one of those things at five and a half miles per gallon or six and a half miles per gallon, that consumes almost all of your profit. All right, I do multiple consultations for small fleet owners. Guys that have, you know, one truck, the guys that have up to 25, 30 trucks. Now the common denominator that I see, before they all go out of business in hard times like this, the common denominator is that they have these old school trucks, these flat nose trucks, these trucks with the Caterpillar engines and their fuel consumption. When I log into their Samsara, when I log into their analytics, my God, when I look at their fuel consumption, their idling times, you can honestly run double the amount of units in your fleet with what they're paying for for their fuel, all right, driving these old school trucks. Now, the first thing that I get from every single one of them, well, I can't find any drivers to drive these Cascadias or these Volvos. Well, you know what, that's not true because I don't have any problem finding drivers that will drive the Volvos or the Cascadias because they are a lot more comfortable. All right, for those guys that are used to driving the manual, they don't even sell the Cascadias with manual. It's gotta be a special order. It's across the board in every fleet. We all have the same trucks. It's the Cascadias or these Volvos or these newer Peets or these aerodynamic Kenworths, the, the, the next generation Kenworths. Those trucks are extremely comfortable. Now, just to show you how much money we're talking about, okay? So imagine there is a fleet owner, okay? So here's a chart over here. Today the national average is a top line, is $3.75 per gallon. Now, if I have a flat nose truck that's running at 5.5 or six miles per gallon, it's costing the driver 63 cents or that fleet owner 63 cents per mile to drive that garbage. Now, any one of my trucks is running at eight, eight and a half and nine miles per gallon. It's costing me 47 or 44 cents per mile versus 63. So let's do a simple calculation. 44 cents per mile minus 63 cents per mile. That's a difference of 19 cents per mile. Multiply that by 11,000 miles. That's a difference of $2,000 every single month. Multiply that by, I don't know, let's say you are 10 trucks. That's $20,000 a month. Okay, if you have a fleet of 10 power units, what happens if you have a fleet of 20 power units, right? That's $40,000 a month just in fuel savings, but I can assure you that truck is not comfortable at all. Now, we won't even get to the technology, okay? You cannot compare the technology that is on these new Freightliners versus these old 98, 99, these 2000, 20 year old trucks. You cannot compare the technology that's on them. I want Bluetooth. I want to be able to see my gauges, digital gauges. I want to be able to have technology. I want the truck to tell me when something is wrong. It's a world of a difference. Your seats, the comfort of the seats. You can't compare these old trucks to these new trucks and you can't compare the amount of money that the owner operators are making with the new trucks versus the old trucks. All right, now I know I'm gonna get blasted in the comments because of the, you know, the EGR valves and all the, uh, the sensors that the newer trucks have, but if you maintain your truck properly and if you do not idle the trucks, 99% of those problems do not exist. The problems come in when you start idling that truck the whole night, there are battery pack APU units and there are diesel APU units 
We get ours from HP 2000. If you are interested, you're more than welcome to reach out to them. But really good diesel APU units that consume literally one tenth of what the truck would consume when you're idling that truck. So guys, quit hounding me about getting a flat nose truck. I ain't doing it unless one of you guys out there can show me that you're running at 9.5 miles per gallon. I'd love to see that, okay? But if you're doing the 6.5, seven miles per gallon, my old Freightliner from 1999 can do better than that, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, and I'll catch you in my next video.